As you know, on the bike show, we always like to catch up with uh, interesting people who come across our paths, and I found another one. Don't let it put you off that he is, in fact, a Brit, but the man is here so often, I think he's an honorary South African. Alex Jackson, um, you were telling me earlier, this is your 71st visit it's, to South Africa. It is indeed. That's over 21 years. I'm, I sometimes think I should maybe have a business. I should have just saved all the airfare and I'd be a, <laughs> I'd be be a rich, rich man. Eh? <laughs> so the reason we're talking to Alex is uh, I, I really like what he does. He runs bike tours in South Africa, mainly for British customers. And what he's done is get involved in something that's close to all our hearts there's a as you know a massive problem with poaching of wildlife in south africa even in the game reserves and uh, alex before we get onto your actual background about why you're so interested you've just finished a tour haven't you and it's a charity ride it's the second time you've run it you raised some proper money for this issue we we did it um it's it, say so it's the second time we did the first one in 2017 uh, it was then called Ride for Rhinos. It's now just called the Rhino Tour because we incorporate it within the business package. Um, the first time we did it, we, th we think it was 264,000 rand we managed to raise. That's Went pretty impressive. to the Sam Parks anti poaching unit for Kruger. And with the involvement of BMW uh, Motorrad South Africa this time, um, we're fortunate enough to have been given the bikes to use so we didn't oh, have brilliant. to hire them. We've got another 105,000 rand. Brilliant. Big up to BMW. Nice to see local motorcycle Brilliant. companies getting involved where it really matters. How, how big is your group then, Alex, that you took this time? This time was there were five of us. Okay. Um, a 20-day trip is quite 20 hard. days? Yeah, indeed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and boy, do I feel it. I mean, you're lucky to catch me sitting down. <laughs> um, a 20-day trip is hard to sell because it, it only hits a certain type of market that are either retired or self-employed and they can get the time off work. That's a long time, so how much distance are you covering? We covered this particular trip 5,700 and quite a few kilometres. That's a sizeable distance. That's yeah. kind of either end of the country, isn't it? It literally is. It, we started in Joburg, we rode across as far as Springbok, down to Cape Town, PE, up past Durban. We went inland a bit to Rourke's Drift because the Brits love to go and see the, the Zulu uh, Anglo um, history there. Yeah. Uh, then out into Swaziland, up through Swaziland, into Kruger National Park at Actually, Crocodile well, hold Ridge. On a minute. Actually into Kruger? Actually on the bikes? Actually into Kruger, in, on the bikes. Oh, that's impressive. Well, it, it would have been even more impressive if you wanted to be with us because we got, I'd usually do a briefing just outside the gate. Say, okay guys, you must stick together, you must be quiet, you keep the revs down. No stopping to take photographs, please, because you've got to be as a unit to go in. And we got about 20 meters in to the, through the gates, and elephants just walked across. Oh, wow. The first one came across, and I, so I stopped the guys. And I said, okay, just sit still, be quiet, just watch, enjoy. And then the second one came across, and we just carried on watching. It was, it was okay. I could see if there was a well-worn path one side and a well-worn path the other side. I could see where they wanted to go. We're just hoping they didn't want to, uh, you know, come and Still investigate, see what we were. a little bit nerve-wracking, I would have thought. It is, it is. But I think um, I've, I've been involved in stuff for quite a few years now, so you, you, you tend to read. read yeah, yeah, you tend to read the behaviours. So on your tour, what bikes were you using? Is it the big GSs or a mixture? We had a mixture. Um, they gave us a, a, a 12 -hour, 1250, uh, the new 1250, yeah, brilliant. lovely. Um, well, think, yeah. Uh, uh, an 850, again, one of the new ones, and two, uh, two 750s. Uh, okay. What brilliant little bikes! Absolutely they are, yes. fantastic. Yes, I mean, the, the layout, it, and it, they were so so easy to use. And the people who come on the tour, are they all very experienced bikers, or do you get a range? I, I do get a fair range because most of my tours are holidays you know yes. we're not looking for the super adventurer want to be a hero type riders we're looking for and the majority of them these days are in fact mr and mrs okay. so two up on one bike they yes. come out and they want to experience south africa i've always said i sell south africa okay well that's the interesting thing he's obviously got a love for south africa and a love for what south africa represents which is its wildlife you're a pretty qualified game ranger aren't you i mean how did that come about just from I'm, the love of it i'm a very experienced one <laughs> um it did i back in 2000 i i did my first ever safari you know in a minibus with loads of other people um 
and then 2004 my personal circumstances had changed and I, I wanted to come back to South Africa because I'd been coming for a few years anyway and I wanted to go and sort of kind of immerse myself in it a bit more. I just happened to find the place, one of the places I'd stayed at, did Game Ranger courses and with no aspirations of becoming one, I just wanted to learn more. You know, I'm, I'm of an age where we were brought up on Tarzan and Dactari yes. and Dave in Dust Attenborough was on every other night, you know? So I wanted to go and learn some more about it, purely for fun. And I did this course and I loved it so much, I went back and did it again and again. And I think I did it about <laughs> five times, you know? And then I got into the tracking side and just recently I, I got my full tracker qualification. Look, most of his clients are from overseas, from the UK in particular, mm. which is where you market. Yeah. I mean, if, if the South African fancy is joining one of your tours, or okay. maybe next year if they want to do the Rhino ride with you, or Indeed. the Rhino tour, Indeed. how can they get hold of you? Um, well, they, could, they can certainly get us on the website. Okay, which is? Uh, capstadmap.com. Um, yeah, that's always a good one to try and tell everybody <laughs> on radio or TV exactly right, what we'll that is. we'll put up a nice banner that'll, and they'll that'll be, able be to see. That'll be perfect. <laughs> Okay, so they can get hold of you then. There's nothing to stop them joining you. Not at all. Is it possible for them to bring their own bikes? Or yes. They again, yeah, so we just can... adjust the price. So we take yes. out the higher price, obviously. And Brilliant. then um, we just, because it is a charity one, we just, just adjust it so that you know everybody um, gets maximum benefit from it so we can hand over more. And then I presume, given your love of the wildlife, given your qualifications, this is something that is not going to fade out of your life. You're going to do this year after I, year. Is that the plan? I'm looking to partner with as many organizations in South Africa as I can possibly get hold of so that we can make this and even if I don't do it every year it can go on to the next level and it can grow into an annual event you know really um, if for instance BMW took it up they can they can yes. sort of run it and market it and, and partner with the likes of Sand Parks um, who desperately need the money the, the cost of security to try and look after the wildlife is just spiraling out of control.